Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge, and this says it is a Tor paperback. I actually got this copy of Barnes & Noble, just sitting right there on the shelf. And this is a winner of the Bram Stoker Award, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a story that takes place in 1963 in a small, no-name town. And every year, uh, the October Boy, a.k.a. Old Hacksaw Face, a.k.a. Sawtooth Jack, uh, rises from Pumpkin Patch at Halloween with a butcher knife in his hand. And he's got to get through this gauntlet of teenage boys. I believe it's 16 through 18. Um, they're trying to take out old Sawtooth Jack, the October boy. He's trying to make it to the church in town, and, uh, he's filled with candy. There's this weird stuff going on, and our main-ish character is Pete McCormick, uh, but he, there, there's a lot of stuff that he's not involved in, which is so why I say main-ish, but basically, it's about this particular Halloween in 1963, and the uh, October boy. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a bit of a nutshell. So, um, I love that cover. Let's start with that. Fantastic cover. Spooky, pumpkin-headed creature there. Uh, I'm going to mention this is in production, I believe, to be a movie. I believe it's on IMDb. I believe there's a cast list already so we'll see that's one of the reasons i picked this up when i did uh because i wanted to read it before the movie came out no idea when that's going to happen and this is the first book that i've read for my halloween reading list i started early as soon as september came around i finished the book i was reading and now i've i've got a pile of books that i've even added to i did a video showing off the books I was going to read, and I've already added uh, two more that I didn't even talk about, and but this is the first one, but you're about to get a whole series of book reviews on Halloween books. Uh, so, uh, the, <clears throat> yeah, we start off with uh, the, sort of the birth of the October Boy this year, and then we meet Pete, and we sort of get a little bit of his backstory and what leads up to this annual ritual. And we have vague notions of what's at stake. And then we, we get chapters that deal with other characters that aren't Pete, other teenage boys. Uh, we even get some chapters completely focused on the October boy. Uh, so we get some backstory. A lot of things are left very vague, but we get a lot of other backstory that fills in some things. And the book moves at a good pace. Uh, I'll, I gave it four out of five stars. And I know a lot of people really, really love this book. Uh, I know a few people that didn't love it. And I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, four out of five stars. The writing for me, does get a little heavy-handed in some places, which is what brings it down from 5 out of 5, because the story is really good, the characters are pretty interesting, especially the October Boy, and the way things go, uh, it, it goes in unexpected directions, I think, but sometimes the writing just, uh, yeah, just felt, I, I'm trying to think of something better than heavy-handed, to try to avoid repeating myself, as I too often do, but um, I, I can't think at the moment of a better way to put it. Just certain passages, certain similes, would that be the right word, seem to go on too long. It's like, yeah, we got the point, you don't need to keep hitting us over the head with it. So there's a few times that that happens, and it, it, that's what's lowering my rating. But um, overall, a really, really interesting read. Well written, except for the 
thing that I mentioned um, with interesting details. Uh, I do know, I, I looked at some reviews, as I tend to do occasionally, <clears throat> especially with a book like this that I know has some people that love it, some people that don't. And some of the negative reviews talked about the lack of uh, resolution for certain things or the lack of, maybe the lack of explanation of certain things would be a better way to put it. Uh, there are elements that are not explained. I don't think that's necessary. We learn enough about these elements. Obviously, I'm being vague, but we learn enough about these things for the story itself. We don't need to know everything. We know what we need to know about, uh, I have to keep checking his name, Pete McCormick. We learn what we need to know about the October Boy. These other elements, <clears throat> we, need, we learn just enough for the story to work. We don't need to know everything. Uh, I could get off on a whole rant here about people who apparently, you know, there are people out there that feel they need to know everything there is to know. I could go off on Star Wars prequels and uh, stupid articles on the internet about plot holes that aren't plot holes. Just because you aren't told something doesn't make it a plot hole. See, I'm already getting hot under the collar. Whew. Pardon me. Uh, but I like the fact that all of this information isn't filled in for us. We don't need it. We're given enough information to make this a good, spooky, fast-paced, interesting story. Just again, I'm going to use the term again, a little heavy-handed in places with the writing style. Oh, Speaking of the writing style, one of the things that the author does, I think I can mention this since it's how the book starts, uh, certain chapters are addressing you, the reader, and it's actually written as if you already know things. You know, the, the narrator or whomever says, you know about the October boy, you know this, you know that, um... And there's a little twist involved there. And no, you're not the October boy. You're not Pete McCormick. Um, but uh, so, the, so some of the chapters do that, some don't. Uh, I'm not sure how the author chose when that was going to be used. That was another thing that some of the negative reviews brought up that they didn't they didn't like that they didn't understand it i thought it was an interesting way to tell the story this uh, uh, uh is that second person i don't know because you're not the person you're not the characters in the story you're it, it's it's like the writer the narrator is addressing you and telling you things in certain parts of the story but it's not I think second person is when it's literally you are the main character of the story. It's, or, you know, it's saying you did this, you did that. This is just, hey, you remember this, you know about this, but see, so you get what I'm saying? I can see how that would put some people off. I liked it. I thought it was an interesting narrative device. Um, all right, so I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, I don't want to give away plot elements, but uh, four out of five stars for Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. Um, well worth your time. A good way to kick off my Halloween reading list. Uh, so I recommend it. And, you know, if it's something that sounds interesting to you, I would say read it before you see the movie. Um, and if it, if the movie ever comes out, I will definitely check that out. Once again, love that cover. Nice and creepy. You know, not the creepiest, but it's cool. I like that. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Dark Harvest, Norman Partridge. Four out of five stars. There you go. Uh, question for this video. We're just going to go very general. Do you have a Halloween reading list? Are there particular books that you haven't read 
that you want to rate, read during the Halloween season? And or are there books that you always read during the Halloween season? Uh, I have a few that I'd like to sort of uh, put into rotation to read every Halloween this year I'm reading, I have my whole stack of books of stuff I've never read before. Um, but there are some really good books that I sort of want to make every October reread that book. Uh, but what do you think about that? Or do you not even think about these sorts of things? I do, obviously. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Re Review Show. Excuse me. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. All that YouTube stuff. And if you have any... Uh, nope, I already did that part. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you this week. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.